In this tutorial, we will answer five questions. What is variance analysis? What are the types of variance analysis? What period does variance analysis cover? What terms are used to explain variances? And how are dollar and percentage variances calculated using Excel and DAX formulas in Power Pivot? Please subscribe if you haven't and don't forget to click the like button. Thank you. Variance analysis is also known as budget versus actual analysis. And it is used to analyze the difference between budget and actual numbers. This difference is known as a variance. Now, the main purpose of variance analysis is to help management identify, investigate, and correct potential issues that can impact the financial performance of a company. And in a structured company, variance analysis is a key function of the financial planning and analysis department. Now, what are the types of variance analysis? When analyzing the income statements, the more common types of analysis include comparing budgeted to actual amounts. That's budget versus actual analysis. And comparing prior year to current year balances. That's year over year variance analysis. Now, what period does variance analysis cover? Typically, actual financial results are compared to budgets or prior year on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. Now, what terms are used to explain variances? When explaining variances, the terms favorable or unfavorable are used to describe the difference between actual and budget. For revenue and income items, a variance is favorable when actual revenue is higher than budget, while unfavorable variances arise when actual revenue is lower than budget. For cost and expense items, a variance is favorable when actual cost is lower than budget, while unfavorable variances arise when actual cost is higher than budget. Now, analysts are expected to provide reasonable explanations on the major drivers of each variance for corrective actions to be taken. So, how is a variance calculated? A dollar variance is calculated as actual minus budget or prior year value, depending on the type you are calculating. A percentage variance can be calculated as actual minus budget divided by budget or actual divided by budget minus one. The results are usually expressed in percentage terms. Now, let's create a variance report using Excel and DAX formulas. There are three tabs in this workbook. The first tab shows the full year actual result for 2021 financial year. The next tab shows the year-to-date actual result for 2022 over a 10-month period. And the last tab shows the full year 2022 budget. The goal is to generate a variance report in this format. We're going to spend some time preparing the data so you can download the file in the description box below and follow along, okay? Now, the first step is to combine 2021 and 2022 actual into a single table. This can be done with the append operation in Power Query or the VStack function in Excel. I'll use VStack to demonstrate how to get data from a dynamic array into Power Query. So open a new tab. VStack. Array 1 is 2021. I'll select the entire table, including the headers. And Array 2 is 2022. I'll select the table without the headers this time to avoid duplicating the headers, okay? Now we have a combined table. The date column has to be formatted properly. So press Shift Ctrl 3 to format as date. Now you can right click and select get data from table or range we have successfully loaded data from a dynamic array formula into power query now press f2 to rename the query actual combined the next step is to get the right data structure this means that all the values should be in one column this will provide flexibility and allow you to filter and slice the data as you wish so hold shift and select the columns with values right click and on pivot columns 
the data is now in the right structure. I'll rename the attribute column line item. Now go to the home tab and close and load to only create connection and check this box to add to the data model. Pull. Next up is to load 2022 budget numbers. Right click anywhere in the table, select get data from table or range. Now we need to unpivot the columns with values here as well. Right click and on pivot columns. Now close and load to only create connection and load to the data model. Great. The next step is to create a relationship in the data model. So go to the power pivot tab, data model, click on diagram view. The two tables are displayed here. A relationship is a connection between two tables. So region, product, and line item serve as connections. That is the link between these tables because they contain the same data. However, when I drag product to product, I'll get an error. And the same applies to region and line item. This is because the actual and budget tables are fact tables that contain duplicate records of product, region, and line items. So they can be connected. So a dimension table, which is also known as lookup tables, have to be created. These lookup tables will have a column that will serve as the primary key that will contain unique values to link both tables. So if this is new to you, please watch my tutorial on creating relationships. The link is in the description box below. So switch back to Excel and create a new tab. This is where we're going to place a uh, region, product, and line item, okay? I'll use VStack to combine these columns and wrap them up with the unique function. So let's start with the first one, VStack. Array one is product from 2021 data. And array two is product from 2022 data. Now I'm combining both tables to capture products that might exist in one table and not in the other. Now wrap it all up with the unique function so duplicates are eliminated. I'll repeat the same process for region. For the line items, I'll use the transpose function to get the column headers. Now please feel free to use any method that works for you. Now I'll load the three tables into Power Query and load them to the data model as well. So I'll speed up this video a little, okay? I'm back in the diagram view to connect the lookup tables to the fact tables. So connect the primary keys to the actual and budget tables. Product, line item. Now let's calculate some measures. Go to the data view. The first measure is to calculate the total budget value. Best practice is to put the measure in the measure grid under the fact table. So collapse the grid. So select a cell in the measure grid directly beneath the value column and click AutoSum. Change the name to budget and format. Move over to the actual Move over to the actual table and repeat the same steps. Right under the value column, auto sum, rename actual and format. I'll create the remaining measures here in the actual table. You can decide to use the budget table. It doesn't matter, it's just my preference, okay? Now the next measure is the dollar variance and the formula is actual minus budget. When using measures in your formulas, remember not to use a fully qualified reference, okay? A fully qualified reference is when the table name precedes the column name. Enter. Next is percentage variance. And that equals variance divided by budget. I'll just use the divide function for this, okay? Numerator is variance and denominator is budget. Close the bracket and enter. Now format as percentage. Cool. 
I mentioned earlier that there are two common types of variances, budget versus actual and year over year variance. Now to calculate the year over year variance, we need to create a date table. Having a date table allows you to create time intelligence formula. So go to the design tab, click on the drop down for date table and select new. If there's no date field in your data set, you won't be able to create a date table. A new table has been created and the date column contains a unique row for every date in the data set. You can check it here. That's the range. Now, if this concept is new to you, please watch my tutorial on date tables. The link is below. A key thing you have to note here is that when the source data is updated with new information, you have to click update range to refresh the date table. Now switch to the diagram view to create a relationship between the dates. So drag date in, from the calendar table to the actual table. And the date hierarchy is not needed. So you can just right click and delete. Drag date to the budget table. So back in the data view to calculate year over year analysis, you need to calculate the prior year value. I'll use the calculate function for that. Expression is where you state the calculation you want to filter. And we've calculated that already. That's actual. Now for filter, you need to use a function called same period last year, and it requires only one argument, date. So this will be used to filter the expression. I'll use a fully qualified reference here, and that's the name table and the column name. Close the bracket and enter. So you can format that. Next is to create the year over year percentage change. The formula is actual minus prior year divided by prior year. Now using the divide function, numerator is actual minus prior year and denominator is prior year. Format as percentage. We can now create the report. You can insert a pivot table from the data model or from the Excel window. So I'll just place this on a new worksheet. You can move the tables with the data model icon to the active tab. Now drag all the measures except prior year to the values area. Actual, budget, dollar variance, percentage variance, and year over year change. Now drag year from the calendar table to columns. Turn off the grand totals in the design tab. Now drag region and line item from the lookup table to rows. Ensure you use fields from the lookup table. If you try to use fields from either actual or budget tables, you'll get an error like this. Actually, it's better to hide the related field in the fact table to avoid this error. So let's go back to the data model and hide the field. Diagram view. Just right click and hide. We're almost done. Now switch to Excel. Now the report is looking good. I don't want 2021 numbers displayed in this report, so I'll filter it out. You can also use slicers to filter the data on a monthly basis if you want. So right click on the field and add a slicer. You can place it anywhere in the report. Now you can take a step back to assess the report. The items are not in the right order. I want them displayed in the source order. So I need to add an index column so it defaults to the source order. And it's easier to do that in Power Query. So go back to Power Query. I mean the line item query. Go to the Add Column tab. Click the drop down for Index Column and select from one. So close and load. Now go back to the data model. In the Home tab, sort by column. So sort line item by select index and OK. Now the items should be arranged in the source order. Fantastic. 
So as an analyst, you have to assess the report and provide reasonable explanations for these variances. Your first question should be, why did this happen? Were revenue assumptions too aggressive? Do you need to revise the assumptions for next year's budget? Does management have to implement some control measures in each region? These questions will allow you to understand the drivers of the variances. Now, to update this report when the information for November and December 2022 becomes available, all you have to do is copy and paste the numbers. I have the numbers right here, and I'll paste it in a 2022 actual table. Now, the dynamic array updates automatically, and all you have to do is right click on the pivot table, click on refresh, and it updates automatically as well. Easy peasy. Now you can go ahead and apply conditional formatting to make the report look pretty. That's all for today. I hope you found the tutorial useful. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Bye. Please subscribe if you haven't, and don't forget to click the like button. Thank you.